following program is for training purposes in TV news education. Some copyrighted material is used and is credited on screen. However, no more was taken than was necessary to tell the story of the event. YBA claims fair use of materials. I think it goes to show the true uh, mental toughness and character and focus, not just you, but just any, any player who transitions from college to the NFL, what, what's needed to be able to sustain all the spotlight and everything, and just to play the game that you love. All right. Uh, uh, I'm just like wondering, Chase Reddick, do you think he could be in the pros one day? Or? Every, every quarterback on Boston College's schedule uh -huh. Could play at the next level. But do you think he could play at the next he, level? He's more, he is more of a Joe Flacco quarterback than a yeah. than a uh, Colin Kaepernick. Yeah. He's a he's a he would be more of a pure pocket pro style quarterback. Yeah. Throws the ball well on the run. Look at it this way. Again, if you get the arm and you get the touch and you get the toughness, and he seems to have all that. Yeah. Um, he's already he's played for four different offensive coordinators. I know. So you think about the challenges, the intellectual challenges he's had to deal with. But when you, up different systems. when you only win two games and then four games, do you really think NFL teams would like really want? Well, I think you're onto something right there, Dylan. Is that when when individuals may be isol identified as potential great players, and there's a there's a correlation between the success of the team they play on and the amount of attention that they receive. And the, 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 one of the best examples I could think of uh, was uh, um, when you have a quality player who is maybe on a list of, you know, you, uh, of a potential postseason award and put up some great numbers, comparable numbers to some of the better, better players in the country and then just not even get a sniff when the final votes come down. And the overriding reason is it was more about team performance than individual performance. So there's a correlation between the success of a football team and the, uh, the amount of attention an individual player will receive in the postseason. Yeah, so Joe Gibbs, he said that you are his favorite player. Do you know the reason behind that? I do, uh, actually. There's a, there's a couple of good stories there with, with Coach Gibbs and I. Um, the, uh, I was very fortunate because I played as long as I could. As long as they let me and as long as they could, it timed out pretty good. And when Joe Gibbs finally fired me, that's what they do in the NFL. They say, hey, buddy, you're fired. You're out of here. Here's your road map and your apple. Hit the road. It's not quite as bad as that, but almost. But uh, when Joe Gibbs brought me in and they just told me that I couldn't play anymore, I agreed with him. I was done. I, I couldn't play anymore. And so he says, well, if you, if you haven't figured it out yet, you know, we, we waved you this morning. And uh, I, so I figured that out. And uh, I said, Joe, listen, don't be, don't be upset about this. He says, why not? I said, listen, I learned a long time ago, you never quit anything that's worthwhile. And this is certainly worthwhile. But if you didn't fire me, I was going to have to quit because I can't play anymore. And he said, I want to thank you very much, Coach. I appreciate what, everything you did for me and the opportunity you provided. He says, you, you're thanking me? I fired you and you're thanking me? He says, yeah, that's, you took the pressure off, buddy. So from that point forward, I think it started way before that. But um, in, in, in retrospect, uh, he appreciated my love of the game. I loved every, every part of it. I loved the practice. I loved the play. I loved the prepare. I loved everything about it. And I really, truly enjoyed the game. The game was important to me. And at the end, I knew and he knew that there were no, no regrets. I went as far as I possibly could. Yeah, and how important do you think that a player's relationship with a coach is? I think it's probably more, more important to have a good relationship with your, with your position coach because those are the guys you're dealing with day to day. Head coach, a little bit different. You know, they tend to be more figurehead, more strategic. Um, but uh, coaches that have good relationships with their players, generally, um, uh, it, it's a positive experience for the player, generally. The, 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 I, I would say that my relationship with my head coach out in Seattle was... Uh, let's call it prickly, it was a prickly relationship. Um, my, my relationship with Joe Gibbs was much, much more, much warmer. Um, uh, two different coaching styles. One was one of uh, uh, highly critical, negative, uh, uh, kind of draconian approach. And the other was more uh, nurturing and reinforcing and positive. And I 
flourished in the, in the more nurturing environment under Coach Gibbs, and I struggled under the other system. So uh, having a relationship with a coach is, is, I think is important, but it's also, I think the, the, the real relationship is with the assistant coach, the position coach. Yeah, so we're going to move on. There were uh, Hall of Fame, the Hall of Fame uh, induction voting was yesterday, and there were seven people who inducted to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, most notably uh, Coach Bill Parcells, uh, as well as wide receiver Chris Carter. So I'm going to bring back in Amon and Dylan uh, for their insights on the Hall of Fame. Um, yeah. We all know Bill Parcells, great coach, legendary coach, led the Patriots to the 2001 Super Bowl and a win, of course, with Tom Brady. One of, one of three Super Bowl wins for him, but for Bill Parcells, his only Super Bowl win in 2001 against the Rams, 20 to 17. But um, Chris Carter and Warren Sapp, too, both star NFL players. Chris Carter is fourth on the all-time um, receptions list for the, yeah, for the, for the NFL and. It wasn't his first time, it wasn't his first ballot, that, but he made it in the Hall of Fame and he had a really emotional interview yesterday when he got word that he won and he started crying and said that this was the happiest moment of his life and it really shows that how emotional the NFL is and Dylan, do you have any input? I mean, the NFL is like the best football league ever, you know, so it's, a, it's the top league, so, you know, if you're in the Hall of Fame at the top level, you're the best of the best in the world playing football, it's special, you know, so, so yeah, I, I agree with him, it would be the best thing, you know, to, to win, to get in the Hall of Fame, you know, because it's so hard day in and day out, you have to work you're absolutely so hard, and the best level, there's so many, there's good players that don't even make to the Hall of Fame, so to be the best of the best is just incredible. Yeah, and I think Hall of Fame, it's certainly a recognition uh, for performing well, but in a way, I think it's almost thanking the players, in a sense, saying that, you know, you kept the fans entertained, so we're going to recognize you for that. You're going you're going to go into the Hall of Fame, and it's very special, and I think that it would be uh, the best day of my life if I was inducted into the Hall of Fame, which of course I would never be. Um, but I think... Sure. Definitely. Take a stab. Coach, commissioner, got a shot. Wide receiver, I saw your backyard running Broadcaster. around. <laughs> Broadcasting. Broadcasting Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, we'll Set see. the bar high, my son. Set the bar high. Yeah. All right, so we're going to toss it to a break, but stick around. We'll have more Super Bowl discussion after this. A new year and a new beginning for Young Broadcasters of America. Welcome to the Boomtown Studio. Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of K Sports Sunday live from Waltham in our new uh, studio, uh, the Boomtown Studio at Rex Trailer Productions. I am joined by Alex Barth. I'm Adam Magaletta. Oh, we're in the Boomtown Studios right here in Waltham. Yeah, first Wicked Teen show here. YBA original programs, K Sports Sunday, Back Talk Teen, and Wicked Teen will be video streaming live with special guests like American Idol winner Chris Allen. So how did how did you change from being on Jive Records? Was what was like was it a fallout that because you're not signed to them anymore, right? Uh, well, what happened was after the first, I made the first record on Jive. BC football color analyst Peter Cronin and sports media personality Michael Felger. How do you deal with talking about the same material and still keeping it interesting? Challenging. It's a good question. It's a challenging thing. Uh... 2013 also brings YBA training to Riverbend Montessori School in Natick. Hello everyone and welcome to Riverbend Today, live from the studio of the Young Broadcasters of America. I'm Garrett and I'm here with my co-anchor Hayden and Mr. Piggles. And all the way to Florida. Offering something called mini mesters, a full week of classes on a subject the student chooses. The local 10's Jen Herrera got to speak with some students who are taking advantage of the opportunity. Future broadcasters. Hello, it is Ed Welsh here with the YBA Young Broadcasters Assistant. Salsa dancers. The Building Confident Communicators program, developed by Surgents, our nonprofit partner, is expanding nationally. Dallas, Texas, and Las Vegas, Nevada will be joining Boston and Baltimore as cities that will teach the YBA curriculum. YBA founder Jimmy Young is back at Curry College teaching his Sportscasters training course. 
using the It's Learning software platform. So the best is yet to come for Young Broadcasters of America, now located in Waltham, where they are teaming up with Rex Trailer Productions. Together, they will build and maintain the legacy of Boston broadcast legend and Hall of Famer, Rex Trailer. Horse trigger. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to this special edition of K Sports Sunday on Super Bowl Sunday. So, Ray Lewis uh, is a defensive back. He, this will be his last game in the Super Bowl today. He is retiring. He announced it to his teammates and to the public uh, before uh, the wild card game with the Indianapolis Colts. And Ray Lewis is definitely going to go to the Hall of Fame. He's really one of the best defensive backs ever play the game, uh, very emotional, and yeah, it's a very emotional player, and even as a Patriots fan, I do not like the Ravens, but everyone respects Ray Lewis. What do you guys think his legacy is? Yeah, I think his legacy is uh, great. I mean, to win, I mean, to, he's already got one Super Bowl looking for two tonight, you know? He's got a good legacy, you know, and he makes a lot of tackles, and plus the enthusiasm that he brings to the team also is big, too. The only thing that you know, might could possibly like, stop his legacy is, like, he used maybe a banned substance in, like, to help him come back from injury, you know? So that's the only thing that could possibly stop his legacy, but other than that, he was a great player. So anyway, what do you guys think about the banned substance he could have used and that he denies it, but what do you think about that? Well, um, I to be honest, maybe he did, maybe he not, maybe he, he, maybe he did, maybe he didn't, but, you know, the NFL is a league where Many people believe lots of players take substances, but it doesn't like who it's part of the game I guess hope we try to Minimize it, but you know, it's everywhere in sports. So but I still think he his legacy might be will be a little tarnished But not as much because he if you refer to him getting back from injury and his injury was only this year So what about the 16 years before? Yeah, he was yeah. still very good. But. Yeah, so but um the I think the most important thing is you can, you cannot measure the intangibles and what he brings to the table his enthusiasm and how he just affects the team his very presence probably is the main reason why the Ravens made it this far I mean just his emotion and everything that affects the defense and the offense and just all, just helps the Ravens in general but you said um, he won a Super Bowl in 2001, and not only did he win the Super Bowl, he won the Super Bowl MVP, and is the fourth player since 1980 to win the Super Bowl MVP. So a very, very rare accomplishment by him. Yeah, yeah and uh, I think about going back to the steroid use, he did have uh, torn triceps, and he is getting older. Uh, it is his 17th year in the league, so perhaps he needed something uh, steroid to make it easier for him to come back quicker. What do you think about that, Peter? 